Welcome to Geopolitical Trends. So excited to be with you today, especially what we're going to be covering about New Zealand. It's, it's uh, I'll tell you, uh, <laughs> I wasn't expecting this, uh, but now it's going to change the dynamics. So that's what prompted me to not only do the video, but also decide to do a live stream because there are a lot of stuff to elaborate on. And I intend to uh, dig deeper into this in this episode here. So I look forward to our discussion here. But before I start anything else, like I always, I know some of you have suggested that I cut off this uh, 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 live stream into sections. I don't record the stuff, so I have to go through the technical process for that. I might do that down the road. But for now, that's how it is. So uh, I need to extend my sincere thanks to the channel's uh, members, new members and supporters. I'm going to give a shout out to uh, Ziwi Chia. Thank you so much for becoming a supporter. I also want to give a shout out to a new member of the channel. Uh, his name is, or the screen name, In My View CCM. Thank you very much for becoming a channel's member. I also another member by the name of YM Lee. Thank you very much for becoming uh, a member. And another supporter by the name of Candy or Kundi and family. Thank you very much for becoming a supporter. So I truly, truly appreciate it, guys. Uh, this is all about, uh, and by the way, by the time I reach 100 members, we are in about 80. As I promised you, I will do uh, uh, an exclusive Q&A for you with a surprise. There is a surprise there. So if you like to, really, if you like the content of this channel here, this is one way for you to show support if you feel comfortable doing so. So I would really appreciate it uh, because I'm on my I'm by myself here on this stuff here. So your support will mean a lot and I will greatly appreciate it. If this is your first time landing on this channel here, just consider uh, subscribing. I would really appreciate it. So that's how we move forward with this community here. So I have just a few announcements quickly here for you guys. Uh, uh, there are some of you have been asking about... Uh, uh, get into the health channel that I launched recently. So I'm going to share the link with you here. Uh, you guys can look it up uh, later on, should you feel comfortable doing that. But I also want to let you know, I will be doing a weekly, yes, a weekly conversation with a health professional. Uh, it will be worth your time. You know, your health is your best asset, as I always say. And, and, and it will behoove you to really learn what's going on when it comes down to health. This is if you care for your health. So uh, another announcement I would like to make is on the 8th of this month, which is on Friday, I will be having a conversation with Dr. Ken Hammond. Uh, for you who do not know who Dr. Hammond is, he's a specialist on Chinese history, uh, somebody who knows the ins and outs of Chinese history, especially between the 14th and 16th century. So don't miss that out, and I will post it for you. I will also announce to you that I will be launching a private course about the government. I'll get you guys the link and all that, and I'll post it for you. And I will be doing some other episodes on uh, Locals and also on a Rumble. So there are some conversations that I can do here. I will be doing them on the other side. So I hope you can join me for that. So. So let's, uh, let's get into our topic. Uh, I'm going to give you just a, a breakdown of, uh, uh, oh, HZ, happy Labor Day to you too as well, man. Appreciate it. Uh, how I'm going to intend to cover this one. So Because you don't hear much about New Zealand, literally. It's always been in peace, peaceful, and so forth. But things have changed now. But it behooves us to at least understand, like I always focus on, you have to understand the geography of a country doesn't matter what part of the world. You have to understand to a degree its history without going into the details and that because we won't have enough time for all this. But in this one, in addition to that, I am going to add two more key factors to put this within the picture. One of them is economics because you have to understand especially why this push, why New Zealand is being pushed into the jaws of AUKUS. Economics will be one factor. And second one has to do with the geostrategic. And with this particular aspect, I am going to be sharing some info with you about the five eyes. I'm sure you've heard about the five eyes. What you do not know is the background story and how many are there. There's more than just five eyes. So, so this is what I'm going to be covering here. So now 
uh, as I said, the key question we need to ask is what what led to this sudden reverse? Now, remember, this has not entered into effect yet. That's why there is now a turmoil in, in New Zealand because you know, they, even the locals, even the Kiwis themselves didn't expect this. Because you remember, I did a video a few weeks ago when the foreign minister, Mahuta, stood and looked at Tony Blinken, the Secretary of State, into his eyes and said, don't ever consider, don't ever think about it. We don't want to be part of, of, uh, of AUKUS. It's because that's going to trigger the nuclear presence of submarines. And New Zealand takes a stand on a nuclear-free zone. Uh, but it was not Mahuta. It was her boss. This guy here. I'm going to share a picture with you. Uh, yeah. Chris Higgins. So, and it was uh, it was uh, uh, the, the Prime Minister Chris Hipkins that that is the one that is now all of a sudden reversing course. He's the PM. He has authority over. Yeah, that's that's just how 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 it works. But all of a sudden, you're seeing this change in direction. So it be now it becomes the question: Is what will Mahuta do? So. Will she resign in protest? Will will she? I mean, I mean, I even can go as far as start to think about some parts in New Zealand might be asking for independence altogether. Maybe down the road. Who's to say? Because now they are embarking. So, uh, I mean, we all remember. You all remember, guys. When when New Zealand was some sort of uh, uh, the voice of its own, in other words, it has its own standing. It was in peace. You don't hear much about it because nothing was going on as far as turmoil or conflicts. It was always nice, you know, because it has a voice of its own. And this is exactly what the former PM, her name is Helen Clark, has said. As a matter of fact, she's the one now pushing against this AUKUS, and rightly so, rightly so. I have uh, I have uh, one of my followers on Twitter. By the way, if you follow me on Twitter, I'm at, uh, let me type it for you guys, so you'll have it there uh, on, on Twitter. I am at the, so you can just follow me there, because that's where sometimes I post a lot of stuff there. So, so what happened is, uh, Helen sort of is pushing against this narrative and for, for right reasons. Why? It's because many have been asking, uh, well, how come all of a sudden you got now a change in direction in New Zealand? This wasn't supposed to happen. So, and what she argued about and she is pulling out punches. You know, I, I respect her and admire her, you know. She said, and I quote, without, with our, I'm sorry, with our military sovereignty hanging by thread. You know, that's why she's calling out the puppeteers uh, pushing New Zealand into, and I use the term from her, that's, I give her credit, from into the jaws of AUKUS. Perfect description. Because that's what it is. Look no further than what's going on right now in Australia. It's going down. There are many questions. As a matter of fact, it was uh, even now the media tried to push the narrative. And the questions came up as far as why the heck is Australia spending $380 billion at the expense of Aussies for something that has nothing to do with their interest? So, and this is where uh, 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 Helen Clark is pushing against this narrative. So, and, uh, and this is, again, guys, this is where the knowledge comes in. This is, to me, where this all is all about. It's not enough to just uh, read about stuff, and you have to understand the dynamics. Uh, this one leads me to uh, one of the interesting... Uh, a uh, comment that happened a few years ago, I mean, when I say a few years ago, a few decades ago, when uh, uh, Albert Einstein was asked, 
he was asked about you know this idea of knowledge uh take a listen here i'm gonna share the screen with you i had to dig and i found it and i was like no 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 i gotta share this with uh oh with my viewers here interviewer once asked albert einstein what the speed Can you guys here if sound was he said this i do not carry such information in my mind since it many facts but the training of the mind interesting so and and this is what's important about understanding the whole reason for at least for me why i'm doing this I'm doing it. Yes, I spend time and research and all that, but it's worth it because knowledge has to be shared. It's not just in the books, reading books and all. That's not enough. If you couldn't break it down and understand it, and this is exactly where the story of New Zealand comes in, because I am seeing it going in a direction that's not going to bode well for the locals. So, so let's talk a little bit about geography because I'm just going to put, and I have, by the way, I put all the links for you guys in the description. So just later on, check it out. So let me share some images or pictures. I'm sorry, pictures with you, but there's the map here. I'm going to leave it on so you guys can see at least. So, so now it's all began in New Zealand. So, well, of course, you start with the Maori uh, uh, islands, uh, uh, sort of island country in the New Zealand, that is. It is an island country in the South Pacific Ocean. So the southwesternmost part of Polynesia. That's how it was always known. So. So New Zealand's considered a remote land because it's far out on its own, surrounded with water, and uh, sort of one of the last sizable territories suitable for uh, uh, habitation and to be populated and settled later on. So New Zealand comprises of two main islands, as you notice uh, uh, on the map there, the, the uh, North and the South Island, and a few small islands in between. So some of them are like almost hundreds of miles from the main group where the population is. Uh, as you may know, the capital is Wellington. Uh, uh, another largest city is Auckland, which is the largest urban area. Well, this is where a uh, uh, lot of uh, New Zealand is known for. And of course, there are the, uh, the New Zealand administers the South Pacific Island group of uh, Tokilo, Tokilo, and claims a section of the Antarctic continent, believe it or not. Yeah, Naomi uh, uh, and the Cook Islands are self governing states, but in free association with New Zealand. Now you see why I said, could be the next movie some sections in New Zealand will ask independence from all. I don't know. So, one thing I'd like you guys to keep in mind is that New Zealand uh, is considered the oldest rock, you know, has the oldest rocks of over 500 million years old. And we're once part of the Gandawana land back then. So this massive supercontinent started to split up about 116 million years ago. And the New Zealand is sort of separated from, from it about 85 million years ago. Another important factor to know, uh, this is why you see, in, for example, sometimes certain uh, earthquakes in Japan and so forth, because you have to also understand where New Zealand sits on. Well, New Zealand sits on two tectonic plates, the Pacific and the Australian. So 15 of these gigantic moving chunks of crust make up the Earth's surface. So the North Island, which you're looking at on the map there on your screen, and some parts of the South Island also sits on the Australian plate, while the rest of the South Islands sits on the Pacific. So because of these plates are constantly shifting and grinding into each other, New Zealand gets a lot of geological action. That is what's important uh, to understand. Now, there is another aspect uh, that I need to share with you. Let me see the picture. No, not this one. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I have the picture for it. Another one has to do with its history. So let me just put the map back in so you guys, at least for those who might be just joining us. 
uh, for its history, uh, New Zealand was the largest country in Polynesia until it was annexed by none other than Great Britain. This is why you see in the flag the way it is, same for Australia. That's for a reason. So, uh, back in, uh, I think, 18, around 1840s, 1840s, that's when it was, uh, it was annexed. So, thereafter, it was successively a crown colony, sort of a self governing colony, into, uh, which, which entered into effect in 1856. Then, after that, a dominion in 1907. And by 1920, it controlled almost all of its internal and external policies, although it did not become fully independent until 1947. Yeah, that might shock you. So, and it was when it adopted the statute of uh, West uh, of Westminster. Uh, it is a member of the Commonwealth. That's why till today, the Commonwealth. Well, whose Commonwealth? Whose wealth is it? So. This is why you see in Australia, for example, uh, they still have to uh, uh, recognize the king or queen of England, the monarchy that is, because that's to me, there is no sovereignty. It's, it's no different in New Zealand. So now, here is the key factor. I'm going to tackle the economy first, then I'll move in into the five I parts, then I'll provide a brief analysis, my own input about how it's all going. So, from an economic perspective, here is where the dilemma is going to be for New Zealand. And I did argue this before. Will New Zealand now, embarking on this, suffer the same fate as Australia? What do you guys think? Now remember, it is not official yet. That is part of AUKUS. But we just have to think ahead of time. Now that the dynamics have changed, uh, you know, uh, 360 degrees. Do you think New Zealand will suffer similar fate as Australia? We all know where the economy of Australia. It's not being reported on. You know, as I said, that's the reason why I asked you guys. Follow me on Twitter because I had a lot of conversations on Twitter with individuals from australia and i kind of hear first-hand source information oh. and the reason i'm saying this is because i'm going to give you some stats and by the way i put the links for you in the description new zealand export just listen carefully exports to china total about 21.4 billion dollars this one comprising of 20 billion dollars in goods and 3.4 billion in services now, I'm going to open up uh, my, my own link here, but I already sent it to you guys, so for you to follow through there. But it's just for you to have an understanding. I'm going to give you a list of the top New Zealand's trading partners. Who comes on the first? You guessed it. Yeah, it's China, $12.7 billion. And by the way, this is as of 2022. And the numbers I gave you guys earlier, those are on the U.S. dollar. This one here will be 12.7 billion U.S. dollar, which is the equivalency of 28.8% uh, 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 of New Zealand total export. Number two, come Australia with $4.9 billion. Number three, the United States with $4.8 billion. Number four, Japan. Number five, Japan, $2.6 billion. Uh, number five, South Korea, 1.6 billion. Number six, Indonesia, 1.3 billion. Taiwan, 1.1. Singapore, 1 billion. And the United Kingdom, 897 million. Then Thailand, Malaysia, all of this enters into uh, uh, in, in the millions. The last one I put into the list that I am looking at is Fiji with the $264 million in trade. Why is this important for you to understand? Because if we are to think in terms of what is the purpose of AUKUS to begin with, what the whole idea is to encircle China. In other words, to use the containment, which is not going to work. Where the danger for us in New Zealand is, 
by the time they embark on this, do you think their territory will not be subject to having a U.S. nuclear weapon? That will be naive of anybody inside New Zealand not to think so. It's the same thing for uh, is the same thing for the idea of uh, what's the for Australia. It's the same thing for Australia. Australia, you look at now citizens. I'm not screaming bloody loud that what the government in Canberra is doing. Albo is so weak, weak beyond imagination. And it's becoming clear to me, and this is my opinion, that Chris Hipkins is no different. But economically, they're going to be suffering. There is a great article, guys, that you're going to need to read it. You know, it's, uh, it's by, uh, uh, what's his name? Mark, Mark Hall. Incredible article. And I put the link for you on the description. And, and, and he's spot on. He is spot on. And, and Mark Hall, I kind of, I used to read his stuff, still do read his stuff and so forth. Uh, very, very incredible, incredible insights that it's worth your time because that will put things in perspective for you. And this is, again, goes beyond just reading an article. It's understanding the ins and outs. Uh, Mick, I'm sorry, Mick Hall. That's that's uh, that's a great article. So, and he's addressing this specific aspect. So, New Zealanders, you that is, will have to really wake up to the reality of how now this economic aspect they're gonna be experiencing similarly what Australia is is experiencing. So, and the thing is. The world is moving faster. It's changing rapidly because it is where the danger that I see. And I'm yet to do a live stream for you about BRICS. There is a video coming up. Be on the lookout for who is the most beneficiary of BRICS. You will be surprised. But that's not the point why I'm mentioning this. I am mentioning this because of the reaction of the West headed by the United States in a reaction to BRICS expansion. And in a historical record, any time a fallen empire, when an empire is falling, it tends to embark on irrational policies, from policies that is, ill-conceived. So that is the whole problem with all this. And you need to understand these dynamics as to why New Zealand is risking, is risking its independence, is risking. By the way, guys, can you hear me? I want to make sure because I'm getting a text that coming through. I can't read it because I am now. So if you guys can just put a thumbs up, please, I would know. So I won't have to be in the back of my mind. I'm like uh, wondering whether you are hearing what I'm saying or not. Oh, thank you, Phil. Truly appreciate it. You know, because anytime I get text, somebody's I know from my close circle telling me, "Hey, we can hear you on so forth." So thank you so much, Phil. Truly appreciate it. So just to go back to my point, and this is where the danger and and when on fire. It tends to have to, it will embark on irrational policies, which is exactly what we are seeing right now. You're seeing it in both nations in Africa, and you're seeing it now in that part of the world. And in New Zealand, when was the last time you heard? When was the last time you heard about any problem or conflicts about New Zealand? I couldn't recall. I mean, I'm aware of uh, Wellington, and that's about it. Auckland, and all, that's it. Nice place to visit, known for sheep, known for uh, the geography. But that's about it. All of a sudden, this is going to change. And to me, the way I see it, if I were to advise the Chinese government, they don't need me to advise them. They have their own advisors. All China needs to do, reduce the value of trade. And you see what's going to happen. 
This is exactly what happened in Australia. Aussies now, you know, and again, on Twitter, I am talking to people from on the ground in Australia. The media is now reporting that the truth. And this is where I see if New Zealand embark on this. Remember, guys, it's not official yet. But it is whoever thought. What, three or four weeks ago when I did the video about Mahota, you know, all of a sudden things changed just three or four days ago. And we have to think, by the way, somebody like Mick Hall, who brought this to the forefront. I give him credit. And this is, again, when I told you guys why you need to be aware. You need to be aware of what you are reading. Because this is where things get very, very tricky. Like I said last time, it used to be uh, uh, when I talked about Indonesia for a reason, because I was seeing so many articles trying to create, manipulate the masses as far as, oh my gosh, the fear, instill fear into how Indonesia is going to be caught between. Uh, now, I'm going to share something with you that might surprise your shock. What again, the media is now reporting on. Did you guys know that Indonesia changed the Pentagon? And you know why? Because the Pentagon released a fake, this is the key word, a fake joint statement that condemned Russia and vilified China. It is the link. Uh, not the link, I'm sorry. I'm going to share the. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the Twitter feed that, that I received with you. You'll see it with your own eyes. And this is why I always say, you think of knowledge, it's not about just books. And I hope you guys can see this one. And let me see if it shows up. Yes, it does. So. So this is what you're looking at. Yeah. The Pentagon released a fake joint statement that condemned Russia and vilified China. Immediately, Indonesia debunked American disinformation. That's the quote. There is no joint statement and no press conference. Our relations, this is the statement by the defense minister, Prabowo uh, Subianto. Our relationship with China is very good. We respect each other. We already have mutual understanding. We are close friends with China. We seek friendship with Russia. That's my point, guys. That is the whole reason for why I had to get on that issue of New Zealand because of Indonesia because I saw where things are headed and authors, some, not all, so not generalized some were misleading the masses it's the same argument we can make right here about the museum that is where my concern is so and you have to really pay close attention to where things are headed so so that's why i said you look at it from an economic perspective in new zealand uh, and again if, if the growing tension weren't enough to stop your fear if you happen to be in New Zealand or in Australia or the vicinity in that part of the world. Yeah. So to move towards a multipolar world is here. This is why we in the United States, we are just uh, sort of uh, embarking on ill-conceived policies. They have no strategy, has no, have no objective. And now we're looking at New Zealand it is a quiet, peaceful country that was minding its own business and all that. All of a sudden, we're going to suck it into the AUKUS orbit. Japan is gone. The Philippines is gone. South Korea is gone. Australia is gone. So, and now, uh, New Zealand. And this again, think of it, guys. Think about this within the global context as a reaction to the shift into the uh, in, into the global system moving from a unipolar to a multipolar not a bipolar bipolar when you have two main powers like what we had with the soviet union and the united states 
this time around, it's not going to be bipolar. Even though there are those who argue that the, the Russian Federation economy, it's not a level where it can be competing head-to-head uh, -head with the United States. It will be China. I don't see that. I don't see this as a bipolar between the United States and China. Yes, economically, the competition is going to be fierce, and it is fierce between China and the United States, because economically, China is moving ahead. But the new global system is going to be multipolar. In other words, there are many players into that. Not all of them will play a role or impact, except the major ones. You all remember a few months ago when I said to you, mark my word, that the new multipolar system is going to be uh, managed by economic blocks, not ideology. That's what I'm seeing here. So, so th this isn't about your typical geopolitical chat here. You know, it's, it's sort of uh, what I see is going on with uh, New Zealand. It, 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 it's, it's a raw information that just dynamics that just happen. That's going to change the equation. It's going to change the geopolitical landscape. It's going to change the security architecture in that part of the world. Let alone the anxiety now that's going to be built within Australia and its neighbor. So this is the this is the main events that I see changing. So economics is going to be China. I believe at this time China is taking a step back and just watching. Speaking of China, I will be doing a video down the road about its decision not to attend the G20 summit in India, which is a big blow to G20. It's, that's another conversation for another day. Let's move on to the other aspect that I told you I will cover, which has to do with the five eyes. Now, the five eyes is very important to understand. Of course, whatever I can share with you. I can go to beyond what I can. There is one image here that I need you. This might not. <laughs> that's an old one. That's from World War II, guys, by the way. This image here is a field radio in the Pacific. That was back then during the Second War, or World War II, that is. And communication technology has changed, of course, drastically. And also the how we gather intelligence and so forth. Now it's far more easier in the digital age. And by the way, we got to give credit to uh, the photographer of Corbis. Corbis is the, this, this picture belongs to Corbis. That's credit, we credit to you. So what is Five Eyes? Well, during the Second World War II, as you may know, intelligence officers at that time from Britain and the US would certainly sift through massive data, massive amount, a bulk of information that information was through transmitters. And this is what well to listen to uh, uh, sort of cracking the enemy uh, exchanges. You know. Still, I'm, I'm going to share this with you. It's not a classified, but still till today, in the intelligence field, some entities still using the transmitter. You know, that radio you used to turn in with the, with the waves and all? Yeah, they're still using that. Or communication, literally. Interesting. So in the years since then, communication, of course, uh, uh, um, in, the, in the realm of technology has changed drastically. We all know that. So is the gathering of intelligence. But despite all these changes, the same agreement still govern the sharing of signal. This is what the five eyes are all about. There are five countries. You're looking at the United States, Canada, the UK, Australia, and New Zealand. So, and that was uh, known in short terms as a five eyes. Uh, back in my days in Washington, if there was something uh, that had to be only shared with, the, uh, with those countries, we only give it the label five eyes. So we all know what it means. That is one of the key aspects of it. Well, of course, if you are to think about the five eyes, you have to look at the Snowden revelations about how NSA played a role into this. 
because as you all know, NSA carries out the electronic surveillance on a global scale. That's just how it is. So here is my thing for you to put in your the back of your mind. If countries that are populated by think that's why I'm not listening to the conversation, they are misleading, they are mistaken. As a matter of fact, in the case of Australia, we intend to have uh, uh, an analyst or analysts from the Department of Defense embedded inside the Ministry of Defense in Australia. We all know what it means. That will be no different than, uh, than uh, uh, New Zealand. And this is why when you look at, for example, the uh, 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 Pine Gap, as I told you last time, there are sections inside Pine Gap uh, are not even allowed, even though it's on their territory, they're not even allowed. There. So this is what this surveillance on global scale and, and build the sort of the shadow of networks that exist. So when people think, they think about the mass surveillance, uh, they rightly think of the, by the way, NSA, but nearly every country has its own signal intelligence. That's just part, even in the military, you know. See that? that Part of my unit, it was in the second. We call it signal intelligence. So you look at the UK, for example, with the uh, GCHQ. Okay, that that's what it, what is that? A signal one. You look at the German BND. What is that? It's a signal thing. Uh, you know, the Chinese have one. The Russians have one. The French. The you name it. Every country has its own one. And this is where the problem that I see coming for New Zealand. That is the big problem that I see. Now, here is the, I don't know, should I call it a shocker? I don't know. Did you know there is more than just five eyes? There is one called nine eyes, and there is one called 14 eyes. Yeah, this might, might surprise you a little bit. And once you understand how the setup of this, you'll start to put things in together as far as the events that's taking place around the world. So let me share briefly with you the, the uh, of course, as I mentioned to you earlier, the five eyes, the United States, Canada, UK, New Zealand, and Australia. Then you have the nine eyes. The nine eyes, you're going to add uh, other countries like, for example, uh, Denmark, okay, that's one. Uh, you're going to add countries like uh, Scandinavians mainly, you're going to have those uh, beside, beside the, the, the Five Eyes. I, I'm trying to get you guys a link so you can take a look at it yourself, you can read it. Yeah, you add the four to the five, that makes it nine. So you have Denmark, you have France, you have Netherlands, you have Norway. Now, here is the here is the key that I need you to understand. That is the key that I need you to understand. What those countries have in common with what just happened since the beginning of the Russia-Ukraine? And I'm going to share with you part of my analysis. When we think about the attack on Nord Stream 2, who was involved in that besides the United States? Can anybody tell me? Can you type in the name of the country that was involved into that? Because it's relevant for you to understand. And that is part of the nine eyes. I know it takes a while for it to show up here. So. You're absolutely correct, Phil. It's Norway. Norway, Naval Special Op, was involved in the attack of the uh, uh, Nord Stream 2. So that's important. This is part of what this nine eyes. The Netherlands. What's Netherlands again? That's why Netherlands uh, acquiesced to the U.S. pressure by not allowing the sale of the ASML, which is the chip equipment to China for a reason. Same thing with Denmark when it comes down to Greenland. So 
Now, that is what my, my understanding of how this all operates. Now, now, don't get me wrong. There are other countries that are not part of the Western hemisphere when it comes down to the sharing of intelligence. I'm going to share one with you, for example, part of the, the SEO, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. It's not just about economics. It is also about intelligence. When you look at who's involved there, you have China, India, Kazakhstan, Rikistan, Pakistan, Russia, Tajikistan, and Uzbekistan. So this is important to understand the, uh, this concept of the five eyes, the nine eyes, then the 14 eyes. While the 14, in addition to the ones I mentioned, you add Italy and you add Spain and you add Sweden. Now you see why the push was to admit Sweden into NATO. Basically, and by the way, I put the link for you in the description. All this is meant for one thing, is to push the agenda of NATO, of the West, but now with the New Zealand is going to be sucking into the orbit of AUKUS, which in turn will expand the presence and with one objective and one objective only is to contain China, which I have argued and I still continue to argue. I still stand by my conviction regarding this. The containment policy will not work. The reason being, it's too late. We would have been able to contain China some 30 years ago. It's too late for that, no matter what we do. And basically, these actions that we, when I say we, not just the US, but the West, but also when you say the West, uh, uh, NATO, whatever, is the US. Uh, all this is is fine is sending uh, like like a not a signal but but a message that of desperation when you start to embark on a fragmented policies that means you have no policy i mean you look at it just with events that's taking place and that is why i always say guys nothing happens in a vacuum this will be the same uh, New Zealand. Now, moving forward, where things is going to be? Where well, that depends, because there are any elections coming up. In uh, in, uh, I had uh, one of my viewers here from New Zealand, believe it or not, uh, sent uh, a comment, and uh, I'm trying to locate down. It was very very interesting. Basically, what it was. Uh, he's saying that I'm putting my tent in front of the parliament in New Zealand. Yeah, it's not a laughing matter. That shows me how concerned this individual is, and rightly so. Because it's, if New Zealanders don't come together on this before it's too late, they're going to experience similar fate of that of Australia. Like my word on it. And with that, basically turning their territory, New Zealand that is, to another launching pad. And in return, New Zealand uh, sort of uh, becomes a target. Straightforward. There is no other explanation to it. Now, we think about all this within what happened within Australia. This is why I was shocked. Literally, I was surprised. After I did the video, the first one, when I said Mahuta challenge, and looked at Tony Blinken in his eyes and said, no. I thought, well, uh, would I consider myself was wrong on it? No, because nothing was, I didn't see any signs. I didn't see any. Usually I, I, look, I look for trends. Nothing. This just happened about three or four days ago. That document, this is what Mick Hall, uh, the, the author of that article, you guys need to read it. Take my word for it. If I knew that the article is not worth reading, I would be the first one to tell you not. This is what I'm saying. Do not read the ones that pertain to Indonesia. The majority of them are misleading, let alone the one coming out of Australia, especially from the uh, uh, National Australian University. FYI, 
because that receives a funding some entities within it from the US. So, and this I have my sources on the ground. So, so that's why those articles in Indonesia don't, don't waste your time. Uh, I'll let you know if there are good articles to read. This one about New Zealand from so Make Hall, you guys want to read it. Yes, it's not that long, just block 10 minutes, sit down and absorb that information. One of the key things that you guys need to remember of all this, and this is why I started to talk with, is, is New Zealand going back or reversing its independence voice? Because if it is, you need to think about what happened in the 80s with the bombing of the Rainbow Warrior boat. Does anybody know the story, guys? Are you familiar with it? Let me see if anybody put... Uh... If anybody can put, uh, if you guys are uh, aware of what took place in the 80s in New Zealand. And it was a boat that was docking at that time in Auckland. And this is again, <clears throat> why you have to understand it, uh, you know, you put like, think of it like a puzzle. You have to put the pieces together to understand where things are moving. Yeah, thank you, Greg. Thank you, Francis. So you, you all know what I'm referring to here. So the idea of the bombing in itself, which was in, in July, 9th, July 10th, 1985, that's when the, the, the Greenpeace was attacked because it was, it was dark at the time in Oakland. So what happened it was, and this, by the way, I put the link for you guys because it's worth recognizing this gentleman here. And I think I had his picture somewhere. I'm going to share, share his picture with you guys because you need to be aware or recognize his face. All right, share the screen. This guy here, this is Fernando Pereira. That's the photographer who was killed in that bombing. And I might even down the road start putting up uh, uh, pictures of uh, those who are writing articles that are misleading so you kind of guys put a face to the author and so forth. So, because it's odd that if you are to author stuff and you don't put your face, uh, that, that, that's going to be a red flag. So anyway, what happened at that time, so around midnight of that day, July 10th, the, the, the captain, his name was Pete Wilcox, you know, and other crews of the members were already asleep. Then all of a sudden, he was, uh, including the photographer Fernando Pereira, that's why he had this picture here. Uh, and in an article, they showed the boat that's being attacked there, so you can, you can look it up there. So the bottom line to all this, without wasting your time here, it was because they didn't want this boat to take off because it was going on a protest against France's nuclear testing at that time. So, and we all know what France did in, uh, in, in that part of the world. So, and this is exactly what's taking place right now in Africa. That's why... Uh, they surrounded, as a matter of fact, in Niger, guys, yesterday, they surrounded the base where the French soldiers are. And the foreign minister of France is saying now the French cannot, cannot conduct their missions. That's a nice way of saying we can't be there anymore. So they're going to have to evac, which means officially France era of colonialism in, in at least Niger is over. Now you're going to be seeing other parts. This is exactly what happened in the part of the world near New Zealand uh, when the testing, and that's why New Zealand embarked on this no nuclear testing, no nuclear weapons, no nuclear what have you. And all of a sudden now, if it got sucked in into Hawkins, like Australia, we all know what's going to happen. So this is what I wanted to share with you guys to put this in perspective for you because you need to understand what this is all about. Without having that understanding, like Einstein's 
bad. If you ask him about something back then, he said that he doesn't carry that information. It's, it's in the books, whatever. It's how you break down the information because you always have to be thinking. You always have to be thinking. And that's where creative thinking comes from. It's not about just regurgitating information. All right, guys, I came to the end of my talk here. Uh, just to remind you, remember to join me for the conversation with Dr. Hammond, Hammond on the 8th. I will post it for you. Remember to follow me on Twitter at DE. Let me type that again for you guys. So just go ahead and follow me on Twitter because I post a lot there. I put my comments, uh, share stuff. And uh, uh, also remember, be on the lookout for, and I will put the link for you for the fourth time. Now we're talking about government. And uh, I will be doing some other conversation where I can talk even more openly and freely uh on rumble yep that's what i intend to do thank you phil thank you all for being here guys and please 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 if this is your first time on this channel please consider subscribing because that's how we move up the number and by the way i did find out that there is some algorithm of sort something that can prevent the number of subscribers from going up even a redacted did mention this one. So. Uh, yeah, Aurelio Vera, legal to the United States. What consequences would it have? Yeah, that immigration, it's another issue, another topic uh, altogether. This is what part of what I'm going to be doing for the members. So uh, if any of you consider this, guys, just please become a member or a, or a supporter of the channel so we can reach that hundred number and uh, uh, and, and we'll do, I'll do uh, exclusive Q&As for you. So, so, Francis Tango, hi, David. I can't watch Rumble. Why? So, that is the, uh, that, that's what I intend to do, guys. So, be on the lookout for a video coming up about uh, uh, breaks. Very, very insightful, very short to the point. But I will be happy to do a live stream detail for you about all this. As always, guys, remember geopolitics impacted daily life in more ways than one. Till next time. Bye bye.